is August 23rd, 2018. Welcome to the Planning Board. I will entertain a motion for the agenda. So moved. Is there a second? Yep. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you. All right. The first item on our dance card is informal discussion for proposed Cumberland Farms. Great. Um, I'm Dan Monger. For those who don't know me, I'm with uh, the law firm Posternak, Blankstein and Lund, uh, representing Cumberland Farms. Um, I'm a situate resident, former planning board member. Um, nice to see all of you. Good to see you. So uh, most people are probably familiar with Cumberland Farms, um, but in case you're not, um, they are a Massachusetts-based company. Um, they were the first uh, convenience store uh, in New England. They have over 600 stores throughout New England down to Florida, um, over 200 in Massachusetts. Um, you know, gas station convenience, great coffee, uh, the chill zone. Uh, they've got a great new refreshed look to their stores and their, their lineup that you may have seen. Um, so we are looking at uh, the site over at 48 to 52 New Driftway. It's the uh, South Shore Auto Parts former South Shore Auto Parts store location. It's about a one acre site. Um, if you look up this plan we have up here, this is uh, the original site plan um, that we drew up for the site. To the right of the site is uh, some town owned right of way. And then there's the little trailhead there between that and the Dunkin Donuts, which is on the right. Um, to the left is the uh, Harbor Medical Associates um, Medical Office Building. The site has uh, about 230 feet of frontage on New Driftway. Um, right now, the entire length of that is just open curb cut right now. Um, the site is entirely within the commercial district. Um, it's also in the village business overlay district. Um, the, the use is uh, allowed by right. Um, there's no wetlands, no floodplain, um, no natural heritage or endangered species. Um, we had a phase one done on the site as well. There's no environmental conditions there. So sort of an ideal commercial site really. There's no uh, direct abutters that are residential. Um, back behind the site, um, if you see the entrance on the right there, um, that goes back into a site in the back. Right now that's used mainly for school bus storage. Um, and there's some construction materials back there as well. Um, across the street is the Greenbush MBTA lot. Um, I guess I should introduce my team that I have with me here today. I've got John Marchand from the Farley Corporation. He's our engineer. And he can kind of go through some of the details of the plan. I've got Tracy Roll, who's with uh, TM Crowley. She's here representing Cumberland Farms. They are the uh, developer for Cumberland Farms. And I've got Erin Fredette, who is with McMahon Associates, who you may have seen before in here. She is our traffic engineer. As far as uh, the first uh, plan that we came up with here, the site plan, sort of the somewhat of the standard um, recent Cumberland Farms layout. It's a front-facing um, gas pumps in front, uh, meets kind of the normal criteria for most of the Cumberland stores, the new stores that they're doing. Um, we went ahead and requested an, an informal meeting um, with Karen and Brad and Ann attended that as well, just to get some initial input um, on our plan. Um, at this point, as you know, we've not formally submitted for application. This is just to get some more input to get a better idea of what everyone's expectations are and what type of plan would work for the town. Um, so we met on uh, June 12th, and uh, Bob Vogel and Neil Duggan came as well and gave us some input at that meeting. Um, John, I don't know if you want to talk just a little bit about sort of the standard plan, and then we can go into how we revised it to meet some of the concerns that were raised at our first informal. Sure. Um, the basic layout of the site is Excuse the, me, could you have him speak into the microphone? <laughs> Thank you. The, uh, the basic layout of the site is to have the, it's a 5,275 square foot um, convenience store building, 
front facing new driftway with uh, the four dispensers uh, between the store and the road. Um, the fuel tanks, underground storage tanks are to the left of the, the fuel islands and um, the trash to the left of the building as well. Um, and we feel this provides the best turning layout for the site. Yeah, and as far as the, the access, the, um, if you see on the right there, um, there's an existing median there, and that's the access people have been using that, you know, for, for years coming in and out, and that would be the primary access, ingress and egress point. On this plan, we're showing a right out only on the left side of the site. Um, there is the stoplight right there, and so um, we wouldn't be looking at a, you know, a full access point there, and it really would just be an outlet. I think um, in the studies we've done, people are going to use that uh, area to the right primarily. Um, and this site allows for the, the gas tanker to get in there, um, which is always a big consideration for these sites, making sure there's, there's room for that, for it to swing around. Um, so, so we had our first informal meeting, and we had a discussion about the new um, Greenbush, I think it's called the Gateway District, is that right? the new draft uh, zoning bylaws for that and, and some of the goals of that and um, took a look at that and uh, Brad and Ann and Karen shared some of those concerns with us. Um, as a result of that, they asked us to go back and look at, if we could look at some different siting for the building that would maybe be a little more architecturally appealing. Um, and also, uh, they came up with the idea of discussing with the neighbor um, to the left there a cross access easement potentially. Uh, which we're looking at as well, um, which would allow us to eliminate the right out only on the left side of the site there. Um, so at our second informal meeting, we actually came up with a significantly revised and much better plan. Um, and John can show you that. So this is somewhat of a uh, customized plan uh, for the site and for Situate. There's a couple other stores they've done this at, but this is not the typical. So in this plan, you can see we're showing a uh, cross access there to the left into the medical office. Um, that would require a little bit of reconfiguration of some of their parking there to make sure that works. Um, at this point, we've only had a preliminary discussion with them, so we're not, you know, 100% sure this is going to be a possibility or not, but it's something that we're looking at that we want to discuss further with them. Um, we also pushed the, turn the building sideways, which was something that um, we were asked to take a look at. And as part of turning the building sideways, um, now it's got two primary architectural entrances and fronts to it, um, which is a lot more appealing when you see it coming up New Driftway. You'll actually see the two entrances and the columns and all of that. Um, it actually works a lot better from a traffic flow um, perspective as well because it pushes some of the parking spaces back to the right there and uh, the air tower, uh, you know, where you fill up your tires gets pushed into that back area there. Um, it allows, uh, you know, two pedestrian access points, um, two different areas for parking. Um, so that, it provides all that without the cross axis. If we also get the cross axis, it also will help eliminate um, the other entry uh, close to the stoplight on New Driftway if we're able to come to an agreement on that with the uh, medical office uh, owners. John, anything else in particular about this layout that? Yeah, I think the main highlight of this would be the, um, the cross access to allow us to access um, at the light at New Driftway. Um, essentially, it it's allows for the same tanker movement um, just with the benefit of the, the cross access. Um, and if you can see on the plan there, um, you can see there's sort of a counter in the middle of the building there. So when they have someone working there, they have to have a visual on every single gas dispenser for safety reasons, and they also have to be able to control the access points, and so that's a big critical design piece in these designs. Um, so this is the site plan we came back with. We discussed it with um, everyone and we were asked, uh, I guess in the new Greenbush Gateway District, there's some, there's this one uh, plan for gas stations. I think it's called the backwards plan for gas stations that was being looked at. 
which is one where you have the building close to the street and the gas pumps behind the building. Um, and that um, we didn't think was really feasible for a whole variety of reasons, one safety and, and otherwise. But that said, um, we were asked to take a look at that and see if we could push the building closer to the sidewalk and see what would happen if we did that. Um, one of the features of the site is that it slopes down pretty significantly in the back. So it makes it somewhat challenging. So we did come up with a study plan just to see if this would work, as we were asked to do. And um, sort of as expected, it, it really doesn't work. Um, it eliminates a lot of parking. Um, as a result of needing to get the tankers back in, if you see the, um, the tanks are at the back of the site there, you have to make the access point um, on the right there really wide open to get the tanker around. Um, and then we'd have to have an outlet in the back going um, real close to the entry to the medical office building. Um, and when the tanker was back there, it would actually block one of the access points. Uh, and then also the slope, we found out of that, if we did this plan, see that driveway in the back there, it would be at greater than a 10% grade. So it'd basically be like a, a ski hill in the winter. So, you know, we gave it a shot to see if it could fit, and it just, it just really doesn't. It's a fairly small site, being one acre. Sometimes the sites are a little bit larger than that, but there's not a lot of room to do that. So, so that said, um, I guess we want to go back to our preferred plan. So this is really the, the plan that we're working with. Um, and it remains to be seen whether we'll have the ability to have a cross access point. If we didn't have the cross access point, we could fit on the same plan that write out only instead at that, at that same point. We'd have to move things a little bit, but it would still work with this plan. And I guess with that, I would just open it up for input and questions. We've got a lot of people here that can answer any questions besides myself. So you've given up on having it on the side? Yeah, I mean this. On the front. Yeah, I mean this one is turned sideways. The building is, but but yeah, moving the building towards the front of the site. Didn't work. No. That was the plan I was just showing you. Right. If you want to go back to that, we can. Had you considered eliminating the gas feature all the day? Uh, it wouldn't be economically viable for the project, so no. I have to say, just as a general matter, it doesn't feel to me like it's the way it's going to be built. Whatever you build there, if it's like that, it's not in keeping with the objective of creating this as the gateway to situate. Mm -hmm. you know, you're just going to see that big canopy with the gas stations in front. And I just don't, I, I don't know how you reconcile that. Yeah. Um, you know. And and that was the point in the very beginning when we sat down and talked to you about this. Um, and, I mean, it's unfortunate because really good planning means less pavement. And this is nothing but pavement from other than a strip of green on New Driftway, pavement all the way back and surrounding your store with gas pumps. And um, I guess you know how I feel. Well, it is a use permitted as of right. I fully so, understand yeah. it's a use permitted. I fully understand that. But that doesn't mean that I have to like it. I think really under the circumstances, maybe if you made the store itself a little bit telescoped it down, that maybe you might be able to get away with having a circular flow and having the gas stations to the right. And you need four pumps. Yeah, we do need four pumps. But if you telescoped this building down so that you took maybe a quarter of it off, which means your trash and what have you would be in that particular area, then you could have your traffic go around and out. 
Well, well I mean, this, this does show the traffic go around and out. I think um, one of the questions, we're not even sure we can get a cross access easement. So even if we do, I think, I have to speak for the adjacent owners, but I'm not sure they're gonna want that access point going right, right by their entry of their medical office building. They already um, raised some concerns about having a cross access at all on their site. Um, we can certainly look into it and are happy to do that, but as you can see, I mean, I'm not sure where else you would put a second access point other than at the back of the site the way we show it. Even if you shrink the building, it still would be around the back. Ben? Um, what is the current, with the current development on the site, what do you guys have to know what the percent impervious surface is? Almost, it's almost all of it. It's, um, the right side is boat storage and it's right. all paved in front and it's got a, a brick building that runs in the back. So it's almost, uh, mostly all impervious. There's a little bit around the back side of the building that is, I think there's some- uh, Brushy stuff. Looks like some abandoned boats and some car parts and stuff. Yeah. <laughs> down the hill, but, but it's, yeah, it's, it's mostly impervious. And, and with the, not necessarily this plan, but the one that the, the front page plan, um, that would be pretty similar in terms of impervious surface about it would probably be a, uh, yeah it would probably be a little bit less actually because um, if you, can you flip back to the other plan right now the um, I wish I had a picture with me but um, I do have an area I mean the, the GIS yeah yeah it might small but it's uh lots 48 52 right if you look at it 48 is where south shore auto parts is it, it's pretty much all impervious yeah it's, yeah oh uh, yeah i'm pretty familiar with it yeah. the um, 48 52 so pretty much the whole site has been um it's been a retail site with you know an old i don't know what 1950s building on it and right all, all paved um the other big improvement on doing anything at all here is that the um as I mentioned, right now it is it is open for the street from here to here. And it goes right into the paved parking lot back to South Shore Auto Parts, which actually comes up a little bit closer, I think, around right here. Um, so one of the things is there's the bike path that runs along here. So this would take it down to this entry that's already there, would eliminate this, and put landscaping all along here. And if we got that, it would take it down to just one access point and would um, you know create this buffer all the way across versus what's there now, which someone can just go in there and just keep the building as is and fill it with retail and you've got no traffic control and no buffer at all. Yeah, I mean, I guess where I was going with that is I'm trying to think between Anne's concerns, which I understand very much, and also kind of the plan that you guys are bringing to us today is um, really to take advantage of that potential for like landscape and green space and maybe uh, like step back a little bit from the hard engineering side and maybe look at the landscape architecture and landscape design and see how, yeah. you know, we could try to do something that still kind of greens the area and makes it um, visually, you know, so you don't see the gas, the canopy and the gas pumps and all of yeah. the kind of concerns that, that Ann and Steve have, have brought up about kind of putting in this you, gateway how district. How do you hide that? Yeah. I, I mean, don't, I don't think you do. Not, on, I'm, not I'm right small. in the front. Uh, yeah, I well, to, you know, to, I think that, I think the building design itself, um, the, the ones I've seen, I've done some, a little bit of research on the, the architecture and stuff. I think you build a nice building and all of that. But I think the, the gas pump canopy right, right in front, right on, we're on kind of the main way down there. I mean, you said we have a 1950s building there. Yeah. And it's been there since 1950. Yeah. <laughs> and it's, you know, it's 2018. And, you know, if this goes in, that could be there for 50 years, right? And yeah, you'd hope it's so. a, it's a 50 year eyesore. Mm -hmm. That's, that's kind of how I'm looking at it. And you know, if you could put all the gas pumps behind the building and move the building up and just kind of hide it all, but I'm, I'm sure that doesn't 
work for you economically, well, we, right? Well, it well, hides it. It would if it fit on the site, and we tried to. It's just the site's an acre and it slopes in the back. So I mean, if it if it worked, we would be doing happy to do that. But there are some real restraints on this site. Um, Why do you have so much parking? Um, it's actually most of it is required under the zoning bylaw. Um, Twenty five spaces. As many as 30 something. It, yeah. it was 30 something before we talked to Bob, and then he said we could not count, we would only count the um, retail floor area for that calculation. We could take some storage and other spaces and use a lower ratio. So I can't remember on. This says 13. I know, John, if we've done that calculation or not. We have. It's not reflected on these plans. Um, it says 33 is there, but 13 is required. Well, I don't know the math. Well, if it's 2,500 yeah. square feet and 200 square feet per. The numbers are rounded, but it's written 13 spaces. Yeah, I think it was. Um, and then the warehouse space, too. Right. Based on the building inspector's um, interpretation, I think it was 19 or 20 required spaces. Yeah, it was 27 originally, um, based on it being calculated using the retail of uh, one space per 200 square feet. Um, and we can eliminate some of that because talking to Bob says, he said that uh, you just apply the retail to the retail floor area and you can use a lower ratio for the, the back storage area. So I think that takes it down to, what do you say, like maybe around? I think it was 19 or 20. 19 or 20. I'm not sure. Uh, that's based on yeah. office and space and warehouse space and retail. And the other reason in the experience of Cumberland Farms, that parking is really needed. So it does, if you don't have that, it's going to create all kinds of traffic congestion because these stores people do go in and out. That would be a bad day. place for traffic congestion. Oh, yeah. It would They're be. So I, I don't think you want to eliminate parking. I think, if anything, you want to have as much as you can. Um, and I think that's why we kind of asked them to explore the idea of trying to go get an easement from the neighbors to go out that way. So there's less, there's a light, you know, for that too. Um, <laughs> and it's, it's, I'm just posing, going to follow up on Ben's um, comment about, you know, the board would definitely need to require the walkway in front and is there any possibility of looking at expanding that island in the front too to put some uh some dense you could have trees and then yeah. in the middle of that island you could have some type of higher shrubbery too to try to help hide some of the canopy too but you just you have to maintain sight distances on each on each end. What's that? Maintain sight distance, especially for that unsignalized driveway. Oh. And there's still, but there's still room. I mean, you <coughs> could have the trees, and then in the middle of the island, try to have some other type of landscaping that would, you know, not fall in your sight triangles. Right. Patty, how far did oh. you try to? I, I'm, I'm I'm sorry. I just wanted to follow up on the comment about putting the stuff behind. How far forward did you bring the building? Um, you tried that. I think as far as we could. Within 10 feet of the sidewalk? And I think that would probably even require a variance. And I'm not sure pulling the building and it has closer to be sideways. Uh, or can it be the other way? And put the gas tanks behind the building. Yeah, there's. And have no parking directly in front of the building. Mm -hmm. Have it on either side. I mean, there's there's safety issues with that as well. I don't know how we would address that. Um, but yeah, I mean. Yeah. Uh, this is not what I would envision. I agree with Steve uh, to see a giant um, gas station. Can you tell me why you need four pumps? I mean, that's you told me you have to have that. that so. Yeah, that's so. just the economic yeah. model to make it to make it work, um, and that's you know what they do at all the stores. So it would it would not work without the four pumps. All of your stores have four gas pumps at least. Yeah. Mm -hmm. This is really it's really not a convenience store. It's a it's a gas station with. With a convenience store attached to it, that's kind of your model. Uh, no, I wouldn't. Like say, I wouldn't say that. No. No, I mean you can't make it work as a convenience store by itself. So it's really a oh, gas oh yeah, right? no, it's the combination of the two. Definitely, yeah, yeah. Bill, 
Yeah, it's, it should be flipped. It, it, and I'm not sure that it, that it's impossible to put those gas pumps in, in the back. But you, you're really coming back up and what I'm doing is opening it up and basically paving the entire acre. Yeah, it had a question on the building. The building is order of magnitude 5,800, 5,700 square feet. Mm -hmm. And then you get and on a base of what, 5,000? 5,275. 5,275. Now in that 2,700 square feet, does that include your training, training rooms and your break rooms and that? Or are those in the storage area? Um, I think that the the plan, the main plan we're working on, I think it's got a total net sales area of 25, 17 square feet. Yeah. So we yeah, roughly 3,000 is the back, back storage area and all of that. Restrooms. Yeah. So part of that is have, you'd be using it for storage. Correct. Part of it would be a training room, part of it a break room. So you have more than 25, 2,700 square feet. Yeah, small office, bathrooms, some storage. What are the hours of operation? Most of these are 24 hour operation. 24 7? Mm -hmm. 365? Yeah. And what about external lighting? Uh, we haven't developed a lighting plan for this site yet. Uh, typically, there'd be the lighting under the canopy, um, and they would have uh, site lighting, area lighting. Um, at the tanks, at the at the um, the trash, and then um, uh, along the perimeter, uh, just to keep up minimum. Lighting. But on a 724 basis, I'd have all of the the gas pumps would all be lit. In front of the store would be lit. Have to be if you're mm -hmm. open. Uh, right? Yeah, definitely. But there's ways to handle the lighting, you know, with the down lighting and the you know the advanced lighting you know, controls it from spreading off site and all of that. And there's ways to handle that with a, a good lighting design. This is truly intense. And I don't think, listening to what the members have said, this is really sort of kind of what we envisioned coming to town. It's, as Bill has just pointed out, you're paving an acre. I wish that there were some way that you could either do it sideways or in the back. And, you know, turn the building sideways, push it forward as close to the front as you can get, and then have everything behind and circle. Like, like this plan? or No. Turn the building sideways, put the pumps behind. And I don't, I don't understand why the building has to be quite that big. If you were to put a second story on it for storage and office space, you have your restrooms and your training on the first floor in terms of handicapped access, et cetera, and your storage is upstairs, then you could telescope that building down. You could turn it. Side. There are things that I think we can be creative. I really would like you to think outside the box. I mean, this is very, very I'm no, I'm sorry. I mean, this is very important. To well, the town. Well, that's why we did this study. We normally wouldn't have done that, but right. we did that at your request. So. I understand that, and I appreciate it, and thank you. But I think we, we need to go back to the drawing board and think a little bit harder. I like Bill's point of turning it sideways and have things in the back. I know that it, there's a slope there. I'm sure that that can be dealt with because you're not in the floodplain. And you're not in, you know, you're... You're high and dry. I know you can do it. Uh, if I could speak on that, there is a little bit of uh, flood zone in the back of the site. Our our plan is not to disturb mm -hmm. the flood zone, but uh, it's just the very tip, the point, the, uh, right? Yeah, there's a, a dashed line toward the back of the site that's within the flood zone. So um, our intention is to not work in that area. All right, well, I think you've heard w what we have, our thoughts are on this. Karen, do you have anything further you'd like to add? 
No, I, I mean, I agree with the board. I mean, landscaping needs to be considered and stormwater management also needs to be um, considered as well. Anything further from the board? Yeah, and I guess, Dan, I talked to you earlier about it. Are these standard buildings? The, the, the original plan was a standard building. This is a, well, if you go back to the other plan. If I open this, a book, I'll put this, a book someplace, I get Cumberland 1, Cumberland 2, Cumberland 3. I, I don't know. I mean, they are they are standardized because you got, you know, they definitely are big companies. So they build a lot of stores, so they have their preferred model for sure. Yeah. Um, we, we came in with what I would consider more of the standard one originally, and then we went back and did sort of a custom one. They've only done a couple stores with this, with the two architectural faces turned sideways. And so that was something um, after, you know, hearing some initial input they were willing to take a look at. They normally wouldn't, wouldn't do that for most stores. Um, it's more expensive, and it's more of a customized store. But there are, you know, definitely parameters for, mostly for the interior of the store, and then there are standards they've developed for branding, as you've probably seen the, um, I think you guys had some of these, but if you look at the, what the stores look like, you know, with the um, kind yeah, of. picture one here, Bill. This one's closer oh. to what they're talking about. Oh. Yeah. Which that is means, the canopy yeah. with the that's store sad. behind it. This is sort of the, that's one that they did with this sort of model that's, that's um, that's in Riverside, Rhode Island. So that's the two entrance model versus yeah. the one. Where are the pumps? Uh, I don't have Behind a picture of that. I think they're in front. Here, take a look at this, Bill. Can you see it? Can you see this? What about the, the traffic flow on the site? You looked at that? So we're, we're waiting to get feedback from everybody and get a finalized site plan before we really start to look at how the traffic will flow, both on site and on the adjacent roadways. Um, as we should discuss, you know, looking into that cross access, that'll drastically change how traffic flows on site if whether or not we're able to get that. So um, definitely something we'll be looking into and we'll be providing a full study um, once a plan has been. Have you done any preliminary looking at the traffic? That's there. a much bigger well, site, so it allowed us so to have it on the side. Really it's much bigger site, but you can see the um, look of the really pumps in that yeah. one and the look of the building. And starting and stopping and so the, the actual building would be very similar to yeah, this very building in New Bedford. Yeah. Slug flow traffic about comes a double or triple size. The site we're dealing with, the train lets out and all that kind of stuff, and it's very, it'd be crazy through there. Do you have any issues about stores being open 24-7? Uh, well, there are some requirements in the general bylaws for, um, for self-serve pumps. I mean, it, there's some of it, so that we've provided them with the requirements of the general bylaw, um, which they would have to meet on that. What about Patty's question about we hours can, of operation? We can look into that. Yeah, there's a provision in the general bylaws about self-service pumps that... Um, ask that you ask the Board of Selectmen for input on traffic issues so um, early in the process so um, at the time we'd submit then you would um, we could go in front of them or you could just send it over to them and get their input but it is noted in the bylaw that they want to have input on traffic concerns are there any of the conditions or any of the, the alternatives that looked at from a traffic standpoint that's going to have traffic waiting in the road to get into site how do you mean waiting on the road in other words, am I going to have traffic backed up waiting to get into in, into the site into the station or into the store so certainly the the intent is not to have that and that's where having the multiple access points helps with that circulation it allows for multiple queuing positions um, and and multiple points for people to get in and out of the store so once, again, once we have a, a final plan, we'll be able to analyze it and, and provide what the expected traffic operations are. But certainly the intent is for not that not to happen. So when do the tankers deliver? They don't deliver during peak AM and PM um, traffic times, do they? No, no I say generally not. Um, and I know that's something that Cumberland Farms has agreed to um, limit since they have control over their, um, their fuel deliveries. All right. Is there anything else, people? Yeah, I guess. Bill? I'm a little slow. It's all right. Yeah. I guess that I'm concerned about being able to provide the, the, the pumps in the back and then 
the exit closer to the intersection. So I guess those are the two immediate things that I'm concerned about. I'm willing to swap off what the number of, because I'm not sure in my own mind that you need 30 some parking spaces. But I'm willing to swap them off for green, green space. Because so I think if you put it in the back, and I think with a minimum amount of landscaping, you could at least make this more attractive. I don't think attractive is right, but more attractive. Or least offensive, maybe. No. Or less commercial looking? No, that's industrial, yeah. that type of thing. Ben? Um, I was just going to piggyback off Ann's earlier point about kind of thinking outside the box. And uh, in my opinion, yeah, really, folk, like, if you guys are going to go back to the drawing board, think kind of about in, looking at, like, kind of innovative site designs. And in particular, I would recommend integrating the landscape architecture early on in the process so you can make, I think that will really help kind of tick some of the boxes in terms of what the town is looking for aesthetically while also helping you guys check off all your boxes about making this work on the site, like all the functional stuff. So, um, and I think it would be good to kind of see that come together in the next iteration too, is like yeah. what, what is this, the green space or the landscape um, softening going to l maybe look like and it would be easier for us to visualize. Yeah, I would, uh, uh, I would add to that that hopefully somewhere somebody has addressed this aesthetic issue of the gas leak pumps right out front um, and I, I would support Bill's idea of having them behind the building um, and it's you know be happy to have another business in town like this you know but I, I think it's really sort of flies in the face of the overall Greenbush visioning plan and what the objectives are here, um, the way it's designed right now. And I, I don't know how to fix it for you. I'm just <laughs> We've telling tried. you what I, <laughs> I'm just telling you yeah. kind of how how my how I reacted to it when I saw it that way. Yeah, and, there, and, and this is you know it's it's our next 50 year chance, um, and I'd hate to end up with a 50 year mistake. Um, and there are some issues that are unique to gas stations as well from a safety standpoint as well. And most towns prefer to have the gas, well, they all do, the gas pumps in front from a fire control standpoint mm -hmm. for accessibility and all of that. Mm -hmm. um, there's been other locations where it's been proposed to go in the, in the side of the store even when it's not very close to the street and fire marshals. I mean, we'll certainly get input from the fire department, but they typically don't like that. Um, they want to be able to have a quick access to it at the front of the store and then there's the sight line issue so it's um, it's not as simple um, a simple fix I didn't imagine it was going to we be. tried <laughs> <laughs> if, it, if, we, if we, maybe we had a bigger site or something and maybe if it didn't slope in the back as much um, you know maybe some of that would be more achievable but um, when we tried turning it sideways and putting the pumps on the side you saw the result it was uh, not easy to do and certainly we would definitely need the cooperation of the adjacent landowner to even consider something like that because we need a access point off the back as you can see the site kind of comes to the point in the back so there's not really that opportunity to you know loop around like the Dunkin Donuts where you loop around the back of the building and come in the front mm -hmm. um, you'd have to have sort of a more of a master plan flow with the medical office on the other side and um, you know they expressed a lot of concerns about even having the short axis on the front, um, just I think due to the nature of um, the, you know the people that visit the medical center and and all of that, they were concerned about that and causing a traffic jam or people going in for medical help and um, elderly and all of that coming in and out of there. That that would be a problem having any access to their site. So um, we'll certainly still pursue that because uh, yeah, it I would, would think be that would be a better compromise right. at least. Yeah. You know. And yeah. all of those people coming in are driving cars, and they must go to gas stations. Yeah. <laughs> so it's, um, well, I appreciate you coming in, and you've heard our input. I think that you can make this work. Think about telescoping that building down, putting your storage on the second floor. Think a few, th again, think outside the box. And this is the gateway 
into situate. I will say we do need to get another gas station, but that said, we don't need it at just such a horrific cost. This needs to look, needs to look good, really good, and I know you can do it. We don't need a CVS in Greenbush. No, thank you, Bill. <laughs> thank you so much. <laughs> All right. Okay. Well, thank you. We'll take. Thank you. Yeah, we'll appreciate you coming. Take in. a hard look at that and see if we yep. can come up with something. Okay. The next item is uh, continued public hearing, scenic road, shade trees, 92 Neilgate, and <coughs> continued public meeting, site plan administrative review, common driveway. Is they both? They're both together because we you continued the public hearing and the thing together, and the um, applicant didn't get revised plans in time um, to have them. They haven't been submitted yet. Okay. Fine. Okay. Okay. So I move to accept the applicant's request to continue the site plan administrator review, public meeting, and scenic road, public shade tree, public hearing for the proposed common driveway at 92 Neilgate Street until September 13, 2018 at 7.30 p.m. This, uh, Second. Further discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Thank you very much. Moving on, we have a continued public meeting, site plan administrative review of 52 Country Way, formerly Morning Glories. Gentlemen. Okay. Hello. Hello. Hi. Uh, Paul Rodericks representing Gunther Tudis and Tony Chen. So we have uh, redone uh, the plans as requested. Uh -huh. And what we have done is we've moved the order um, menu board speaker one space forward so the cars weren't backing up into the shared access. We've added a, um, a PVC fence screening off of the cooler that'll hide all of the HVAC and cooler condensers. Uh, when we get to the architectural plans, we are uh, putting a roof over the cooler and completely screening in the cooler so the siding is the same around the cooler as it is on the building so you won't even be able to tell that there's a cooler in there. Um, the dumpster location stays the same. The fencing around the dumpster pad will be the same uh, PVC material, not chain link fence. Uh, we have incorporated the landscape plan from uh, that 50 is providing to the site and the trees that they're including in here. Um, and then this area we're planning on, on, on grasses. Uh, I think that's, we did uh, have a bike rack that we've added over in this area here. I think that was most of the stuff on the, on the site itself. Um, we redid the front elevation so that the, the, the windows don't go all the way down anymore. There's a little mm -hmm. area there so it looks more like windows than a bunch of doors. Uh, signage is on the front of the building and out on the street which we just got that today, which I'll show you pictures of. Uh, we do have to permit for the signs, so that will be part of that. Um, we have eliminated the big drive-through sign that was on this side of the building. We got rid of the sign that was on Stockbridge and we added some windows in there. Over on this side right here, you, that you can see that the cooler is completely screened in. We have the PVC fence. The one thing that is going to be exposed is a generator. He needs, with the power situation over here constantly going down, he can't have the cooler go down because of the items that are in there. So 
um, and we can't put the generator in there because of clearances and exhausts and things of that nature. So it is in its own case, uh, but you will you will see that. Um, this shows you a little better the the fence and the generator. And then um, we just kind of finalized the interior plans, which I got uh, last night, which I brought a couple of copies for you. The seating um, has not changed. We're still at 16 seats. And then we have the four seats out on the patio area. These are the preliminary plans for the sign out on the road, which I think is a little more attractive than what's there. Yep. And this is on the uh, on Country Way, just before you get to Stockbridge. That's where that is. Yes. Okay. Will it be lit? Will the sign be lit? There is. Uh, it has to be external. But that is correct. It, it will be lit from the ground. Yeah. Okay. Yes. And that's how the current one is lit. And you'll make sure that however that is lit, that it doesn't bother anybody driving. Driving, by. yes. And this is this is sort of, this is two scales, so it's an accurate accurate representation of where it is with respect yes. to everything else. Yeah. So it's inboard enough. People it, trying it, to get out won't be blocked. That is correct. Okay. And that is going to run perpendicular to Stockbridge, so the the lights will shine that way mm -hmm. and not out onto Country Way. Um, Karen? Um, they have done most of the changes that the board asked for last time and that the design review committee recommended. However, we didn't get the stuff till yesterday. Um, and um, I, I don't have a full motion or anything um, made for you. Um, have, have you had any success in um, coordinating with your neighbor? 50 country way? No. And, and I don't know how far along they are with their process and you know when they want to do curbing we're going to extend the curbing uh, you know their initial curbing came here and then turned into the building and we're going to extend that curbing down to there um, but no we, we haven't is the extension the same look and feel as the existing yes curbing? yep precast concrete uh -huh. and did you address the um, the runoff issue the, the 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 runoff issue that we were having through um, the downspouts over here which trying to we're go across through, the through the bed and across the road yes so that's in there somewhere yes oh, I'm sorry I can't see yep. it. I guess I should put my bra on. and there's uh, so your engineer has looked at that in terms of grades, et cetera, that it's going to get to the catch, the catch basin, et cetera? Yeah, because we're not changing the grades. The, the grades, the, the parking surface that's there now, we're, we're not changing that. No, but you're, you're dumping the water and expecting it to go across the island to the, to the drain. It's going to go through the island that's what I mean. and out onto the road. Right. Yes. That will come out. So that's what Karen's asking is, yep. are those grades sufficient to make that happen? Yes. In other words, it could go the other way and you'd end up with... No, nope. 
a pond. So you've looked Cause, at that. Yeah, because we have, we have curving here, and everything is pitching this way towards this catch basin over here. So all, all of this all pitches this way, uh, and all of this is you know, pitching out towards the front. So anything that you that comes out of here is all going to go into this catch basin over here. Right, it's the two corner it's the roof drains that are coming down on the it, other side that are dumping onto the road that have to go across. This 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 one over here and then this one over here, yes. Right. And so you've looked at the grades. Yes. So when you dump water there it will definitely yes. run. Okay. Comments from the board? Ben? Um, no, I think they did most of kind of what we talked about is most of it's on here. Uh, the only the only thing I could see in the f might be just I don't I don't think it needs to be announced. There's so many moving parts with the other project, mm -hmm. but this little strip I think on the other side is is a public right away sidewalk, and the idea is that to make this whole area eventually more walkable and get people you know riding bikes and walking to the area and shopping and hanging out going to the train whatever yeah so just in the future you guys might see an influx of foot traffic coming in and it might be something you know, you might have a section that's loamed and seated that all of a sudden now it's dirt because everyone cuts across the lawn or something or those are things you won't really know till people start coming you, you in. know i mean we see them now the time that we're on the site is when they're yeah. coming across stockbridge they're not walking here they're cutting through Right. The, the, you know, the planting bed, I don't see any advantage to anybody walking down this area here or even behind the building. Yeah. Because there's a fence that comes all the way up to this point. So when they're coming around, they're going to go down that way. Yeah. So, yeah, that, my point is just, I guess, for you guys from a maintenance perspective, it might yeah. make sense to put a couple stepping stones or few pavers or something if somebody's if they're always if you see that foot traffic is always cutting a certain way mm -hmm. just to kind of encourage the yeah. walkability of the area yeah. or whatever it's the old boston approach to making yeah. streets right and yeah. we'd, 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 we'd love to see foot traffic you know that's so. to your benefit yes yes okay patty no, nothing good, good no. job no i think they've captured our comments all right here is the issue gentlemen because all of this was such a late submittal, mm -hmm. we do not have um, an approval written up. Um, so, Karen, what do you suggest? Um, I, I, I just didn't have time to do it, and so, I. And I understand that. And I mean, we, I, I just. I think that it would be really important for you to for you to coordinate with Mr. with the owner of 50 Country Way to make sure that I mean there's certain things that they're required to do, and even the on this access and utility easement, and I want to make sure that you and um, he are in agreement with all that. Etc. I mean, because he owes you curb, he owes a certain amount of curbing, but you're expanding the mm -hmm. curbing. Um, you know, act, you can't block each other's access, etc. Um, I just, um, I'm, I'm concerned about that. Yeah, yeah. and and we've, we've notified him because we fenced in the area. Yeah, I. I've and seen and it. we've seen it. contacted them to say, hey, you have stuff on our property that needs to be removed, with no response. This is what I would like to do. I'd like to put you on the agenda for the next meeting. I know that this is upsetting to you because you just want to get going here. However, because of the late submittal, because we need to have something from Genta, 50 Country Way, so we can have all of our ducks in a row, you won't be here more than a few minutes, maybe 15. I, I wouldn't think so. I mean, I just... I mean, and, and I this just meeting wanna, is when? Um, this meeting would be the um, 13th of September. 13th of September. Next meeting. We only got about uh, winter seasons coming, so we only got a few months to be in the construction. So I don't want this the whole project to go all the way into the next summer. It won't. So it will take a lot of time. 
No, I, I understand that. But on a construction standpoint, it's a lot of work to be done. So we can't afford to go into the next summer. And I mean, I mean, construction always. So can, 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 can we start our permitting process yes. on the building um, yep. with a condition that everything is approved here? Yeah, they won't issue the building permit unless you have a, yes. a site plan approval. Right, they won't issue I, I don't the building know that, permit. Uh, I, mean, I don't know how much work the uh, building department will do in advance of that. I don't have any objection to them. But, I mean, we, we, we don't want to wait till the 13th and then apply on the 14th, and then we're another 30 days out from there. Karen, I think that would be up to... Mr. Vogel, right? I would think that would be up to Mr. Have you started? Um, have you done it? Have you started with the Board of Health? Uh, we or did. Asbestos and, um, you know, yeah. pest for a demo? Yes, that's all done. Asbestos okay. is done. Pest is done. Okay. All that stuff is all taken care of. Is there not an appeal period with this as well? It's site plan administrative review. So it's, no. not, it's not a special permit. Okay. Right. So is there a possibility, Karen, I'm just going to throw this out to you, that we could theoretically approve this, the conditions to, to follow on the 13th? Pretty open-ended. I know. I'd be a little concerned about the precedent we're setting now. Yeah, right. I, 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 I think it would be better if, I mean, we could draft the decision and I mean, I circulate I, it and all I, that kind I of started, stuff. I started. I started to, to do it. Yeah. I mean, I just, um, yeah, I started to do it, and I just, I ran. I'm sorry, I ran out of time. No, and, 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 and I understand. Be, uh, you know, on, on our end, we had the civil engineer, we had the architects, we had the interior designers, and trying to coordinate all of those people in two weeks I would uh, think the best you can do here is that we'll get the decision drafted and yeah, we'll I mean, internally I, look at it and be prepared to discuss it and mm -hmm. vote on it on the 13th yeah. in the interim I don't know that that should prevent you from starting the permitting process with the building department it yeah. will prevent you from having a building that, permit uh, that's uh, we, we understand that because okay. there's that process and along, I, I dare say I, I, I don't know if they can bifurcate those things and do a demolition permit just a demolition permit before there's a site plan approval or they really need that I'm not a, I, I don't know the process. we could file I think, for a I demo permit you, tomorrow if we yeah I think to. you could do the demolition yeah. if you wanted to but um, but I think from approval standpoint they want to know what's going back there yeah it makes their job I think a little easier so um, that's why I threw that out and yeah I mean, the thing the, the concern that will be that's in their special permit and will be in, a, in any approval that we give you is that the access and utility easement re, must remain open at all times mm -hmm. so that you're not blocking their access and they're not blocking your access yeah uh, even during construction uh, we, that's i mean that that's a that's a big concern yeah. to i think both parties well, that'll be in the decision. Well, that'll be just yeah, articulate I mean, that I mean, decision. For, you just need to prepare um, for it, right? For us, we don't have to bring any more utilities in. Our gas line's already in. The little bit of work that we have to do in this access area is extending the curbing, and we're not going to block any more than they are to put the curbing in that they have to do here. So uh, we, uh, our electrical service comes in from here. Uh, the water service is over here. So. We're, we're not mm -hmm. cutting open or doing any work in the easement area. Okay, and your sewer connection? Uh, sewer connection comes around the back of the building. Okay. And have you we, coordinated with DPW on the maintained, um, the deep, uh, the, 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 the grease trap, the grease tank? Maintain, they, I mean, last time I wrote that the DPW wanted, you have to coordinate with them for the maintained sewer flow, et cetera. Um, have you, have you we, spoken we, with we, them? we have spoken with them and they did give us a uh, an as built of what was there prior to the work done at uh, 50 so I don't even know if they have the the current as built of what the change was over there okay. all right so we will continue this until the 13th 
and start in the building office mm -hmm. tomorrow about your demolition. Make sure you've touched base with Board of Health. Um, and, yeah, I mean, you've got a laundry list of things that you need to do bef before you even get the approval. So, yeah. okay. Nothing further from the board? I think that's it. You did a, did a good job addressing all of the mm -hmm. questions we had. Um, unfortunately, um, as, as Karen said, it, it's a little late um, oh, uh, just in our process because right. we've yeah. got a lot of things going on. True. So it sort of pushes us to that next, yeah. next meeting. But, um, but we've, we've met all of everyone's concerns as far as what needed to be addressed here. That's correct. Yeah, okay. I think, I think I think you got a pretty comprehensive list from Karen last time. And it looks yeah. Like you addressed I, I just, ha I haven't, I mean, I, I haven't really coordinated fully to, I mean, I started writing, I started working on this today, but it's, um, we're, we're just, ve we're very busy. No, and I understand. Uh, and I'm not at, at the ninth hour that we got it to you. We're trying to treat everybody the same, you know, same fairness. All right. Well, okay. thank you very much. I would much. also say one other thing. Yes. Um, to the extent that they've attempted to contact 50 Country Way on all of this stuff. We, if we the guy is just not responding, you know, we'll condition their approval with what they need to do. Right. But at the end of the day, it's, you know, it's the other guy's responsibility no, I, to talk I understand. to them too, right? so I started, You can't hold them up no, forever no, because he won't talk to them. I started writing things that reflect what's recorded and what was approved in 50 Country Way yeah. about who does what. And I started to put that in here, and I, but I just, yeah. we always like people to talk to each other mm -hmm. and to make well, it sure. It sounds like they've tried. Oh, I, so. I, 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 <laughs> I agree with you. you know. I, I guess my point is I just don't want to hold them up for the want of somebody yeah. returning their phone calls, right? So. We had been and, called and, for and a few we'll times already, and at the one at the one gentleman, Michael, say we got to take a dance on next day. <laughs> Two weeks later, they're still there. So, yeah. you know, I mean, they seems like uh, one people, they say, oh, yeah, we're everything okay. And that sound just no response at all. So, it just. Uh, our our uh, approval may or may not change any of that. So, yeah. you'll yeah. still have to chase we'll, them. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. We'll, we'll keep reaching out to them and doing what we need to. You can't make uh, them talk. Their occupancy hinges mm -hmm. on them doing their stuff. All of this stuff, too. Yep. That's right. That's right. And how That's far true. are they out, in, you know, in regards to that? Well, they have occupancy in the first building, right? Okay. That's it. Temporary. But just right. the first building along yeah. Stockbridge behind okay. where Morning Glories yeah. is, right? Okay. The other two, they don't have occupancy preparedness yet for. All right, gentlemen. Thank okay. you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Oh. We need to do a time. continuation. Right. Time. Um, what, how's the agenda? Um, you want to say 8 o'clock? 8 o'clock. Thanks, Craig. That's it. Just make it up. Yep. <laughs> yeah, you make it up. Um, move to continue the public hearing on Gunther Tootie's until 8 p.m. on September 13th. Second. Is there need, do we need to continue a decision period or is it just that? It's a public meeting. It's a public meeting. All right. I have um, a second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. Okay, now we're into old business, new business, et cetera, et cetera. A form A, A and R, 44 Ocean Avenue. Applicant owner, Donald F. and Joan M. Gillespie. Registered Engineer Morris Engineering. This is an A&R approval not required plan for the division of land of 44 Ocean Ave. Uh, depicted on the plan, Ocean Ave is at the bottom of the page. Ocean Ave is a public street. It is paved. There are utilities within it. The property here is highlighted in black. Um, consists of just over 50,000 square feet. This is located in the R3 zoning district requiring 10,000 square feet. 
The proposal is to create a division line here, which would create the property into two lots. Lot one being the new construction lot, consisting of 10,000 square feet. Lot two being the remaining land with the existing house on it at 40,379. Both lots have the 100 feet of frontage, and both lots have the 10,000 square feet of land area required for endorsement. Thank you. Um, Karen? Yeah, both lots have um, access and frontage. Even though there is a guardrail in front, um, it's, I mean, they'll probably have to do some filling, but it has access and frontage, and the board um, should endorse the plan because it meets the requirements. They will, pro they will need to coordinate and keep stormwater on site, but it has access and frontage. Comments from the board? Do, do we have our typical statement that we're not endorsing it as a buildable lot? Yeah, we'll stamp that on there. Okay. All right. Um, ben, nothing? Are you going to rip the house down that exists? We got delayed for 15 months from historical, but we're going to rip it down in 15 months and build a new home there. Okay. We're going to fill in all the gardens. We're going to fill out Owen. Uh, the garden, actually, that lot, the garden is on that lot, so the garden on the left side of the house will get filled in. The stuff to the right on the corner of Cherry Lane won't get touched. I move to endorse as approval not required a plan of land in the town of Central Mass to choose its 44 Ocean Ave, prepared by Morse Engineering Company, Inc., for applicant owner Donald F. and John M. Gillespie, dated 8-1-18, as the division of land shown on the accompanying plan is not a subdivision because it shows every lot of the plan has frontage of at least a distance presently required under the Citroen zoning bylaw on the public way of Ocean Ave. Okay, is there a second? Sure. Discussion? All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. All right, next we have Curtis Estates, Welby Builders. Discussion of condition? No, no. no we're not doing, okay. No. Uh, just to let you know that the discussion of condition 29 has been postponed. We will not be talking about that tonight. Um, permission to trim invasive vines in the 20-foot buffer area to save two trees. Tree cutting along frontage, frontage buffer to rebuild stone wall. Good morning, Madam Chairman, and great uh, Nancy Ross Engineering for the record. Well, um, as you, this is a a uh, interim as built plan of what we have out there. These are the two trees that we're trying to save. Mm -hmm. And this red line is what the current limit of fill is. Um, the, these, these berms were, they were located, and they're, they're pretty good as far as location goes. Um, the grading from, from here to the trees is steeper than a three to one slope. And the reason why it's steeper than a three to one slope is we want to save those trees. Filling over the, the trees over its root ball and up to um, you know, uh, the trunks it is a threat to the tree. Uh, more often than not, they don't survive. Um, if you fill too much over the root ball of the tree, they will die. So you're on risky business. If you want to, if you want to grade this out at three to one, we can. But you, you're significantly putting risk at at losing the trees. Um, what we'd like to do, and, and this is um, in conjunction with what Peter Palmieri had made a suggestion is we could put a, a light rip wrap and stabilize that slope, even though it's not three to one, if it's rip wrapped, it'll, it'll add stabilization to, to the slope. Uh, so that if it's at a you know, one and a half to, to one or two to one, that rip wrap will, will stabilize the slope. 
as opposed to a three to one being stabilized with loam and seed. Which will wash down onto the tree. Yeah. Okay. What about vines? There's something here about. We're, gonna, we're going to trim um, both of those trees we're trying to save because of the neighbor, the abutter. That these vines. Um, yeah. They're, they're both, they're covered in vines. So we're gonna cut the vines probably at the bottom at this point um, and, and put a gap so that the vines die. What is it, poison ivy or something? It's, 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 I'm not sure what it is. A lot it, of it's bittersweet. bittersweet. I mean, very, very large bittersweet. Okay. Um, it was Big in roots. the July 31st report. These are, yeah. these are the two trees and the, and the slopes that we're talking about. We brought two aside. So how do you treat the if you if you go with the rip wrap, how does it end at the tree? Does it end up right against the tree or no. is it No, if you rip wrap these um, slopes, it, it ends the toe of that slope where it hits the ground is I estimated you know a couple of feet anyway, two and a half, maybe three feet off the trunk. Maybe more, maybe three, three, maybe three and a half feet. I might be looking at the wrong picture, but it looks to me like it's going pretty close to the tree. Is this the right picture? This is the one they just gave us. I'm looking at the one in the report. Mm -hmm. that, that looks like it's sloped right. Would you change the slope or something? Is this going to stop here and go over? I'm not sure what, that, what tree that is. Or I think this this was Merrill's report right. on this issue. Right. That does not look like what I saw when I was. This out. isn't the tree. This is this is the. Um, there are two of them, and they're very close together. Um, I think there's the one tree. just this behind is, this one. I think this is the tree you're looking at here, and there is room to get over to that tree. Okay. The other one is the first tree. And, and that's the one. That's yeah. pretty close. Yeah, that's the one I'm looking yeah, at here. This is about an 18-inch silk sock, so uh, I think it's 18. So you're looking at maybe a foot and a half between the, the toe and, but you can see the vines that we're talking about. Mm -hmm. No, I see those. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Karen. Um, well, as Mer um, Mer Peter Palmieri is on vacation. Um, I believe that the silt sock is at the limit of work and that the slope was, con that this was constructed prior to, I mean, it being fully laid out. Um, having said that, I agree that the vines need to come off the trees, but it has to be done from the uphill side and it has to be done by an experienced person um, who's skilled in cutting in, in cutting these type of vines. Okay. Ben, you're our guru when it comes to this. Um, <coughs> I think cutting the vines is fine. Uh, they're probably invasive species. Anyways, I agree with Karen that uh, you're probably going to want somebody that is a licensed pesticide applicator with experience dealing with invasive species. The problem at this point is one of the tr at least one of the trees we can't get to because they've built the berm already. So with, with equipment, the, the only the the only um, well, what what the tree cutter suggested last week was to just just cut them and they'll die. Yeah, no, I agree. That's how uh, they but, do it. But usually. my point is that you probably want to do a cut and dab method. So get somebody that knows what they're doing with herbicide because otherwise it's just going to grow right back. I mean, if you're if the intent is to permanently remove it, yeah, that would be the method is to yeah. do a cut and dab. So you you cut the vines at the base and then treat it so the whole thing dies systemically usually with glyphosate or some other ingredient like that but um, that's could you get to the tree to do that yes yes oh yeah you that's could just send somebody operas. in with a chainsaw to you know right. cut a gap or then whatever we need to treat it with that's what we'll do 
I know we, Karen, we talked about cutting the vines down off the tree. Yeah, we did cut, We did talk about that, but it has to be done by a professional. But it can't, the problem is now we can't get to it. Can't get to the tree? Person can't get to the tree? Uh, a person can get to the tree. That's how they usually do it. But they well, need probably a lift. We would have done it with a bucket truck. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, just hire a guy who will climb it. <laughs> Cut it. Well, <laughs> there are plenty of those guys out there. <laughs> I think as long as we kill the vines, the trees will survive. That's what I do in my work. I, I usually find that I do more damage trying to remove them. But it takes a couple seasons for them to bounce back. Right, what about the slope? And the riprap, Karen, you want to comment on that? Um, Peter Primary hasn't reviewed their proposed okay. solution because um, he's on vacation. Okay. So then we will hold that in abeyance as far as the riprap is concerned until Palmieri is back. But in the interim, you can cut your, your vines. But does the board have any objection in some areas where there are no trees, where there's just thorn bushes and that sort of thing to grading the toe into the 20-foot buffer? The limit of work is the limit of work. Yes, we, I, I do not recommend that. that. We, we've had multiple neighbors calling on this project, and the limit of work is the limit of work. Right. I'm not talking about disturbing anything in the 20-foot buffer, just, just grading the toe in and loaming and seeding. But well, wouldn't you have to do that anyway? I, I, I'm, I'm confused now. Wouldn't you have to wherever you hit the limit of work, you'd have to grade down to that, right? Down into it. That, when that's to the limit of work, right? Right, but what I'm saying is there are plenty of areas within the, the limit of work that are wide open, or they've got thorn bushes, or they've got, it's just there. And, and there, we're, there's, there's absolutely no impact on the open space if we, if we end up grading a foot into it in some places. Well, why would you need to do that? I, 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 well, to get it, the three to one. As it happened, we've got, you, you should take a ride out there. I know you've been out there, but it is, these things are, if we ever have a storm that these things become necessary, we'll, we all better have a boat somewhere because this is huge. And, the, and, the, and the, the berm itself is at the point where we can't get a three to one slope in, some, in a couple areas. Well, that's what you're, why you're proposing to do riprap, though. Riprap in the area of the tree, because that's even a little closer. Oh, there are and other areas that you can't get the design slope. I didn't, I didn't realize yes. that. Is Not that a up lot, here? but there are. That's what the construction report from last week said. Yes. So, are you putting riprap in those areas? We can. Well, if you don't, you're going to end up with it all washed down into the. Well. We, uh, right, it, a one-to-one -one slope is like 45 degrees, right? But we don't have a one-to-one -one out there. No, no. I, I mean, well, this looks pretty bad. Oh. At, at the at the max here, um, the the toe slope it, it, it was a little bit higher than what the the design plan called. It, it was it's about four four tenths higher higher the grade. I mean, they did, a, uh, they did a good job, I mean, but to, to pinpoint it e exactly, um, it, it, it's, it's tough. And then it could go about eight tenths away from the, the buffer, which is you know, pretty much what the design plan called. And then, then it would daylight right at the line. Actually, it would be a, a fraction of a foot beyond just because some of that Existing gray got, got matted down and cleared when they put the, the silt sock down. So if the grades, you know, it only has to be three tenths lower for it to run out another foot. Um, what we'd like to do is just to let that slope naturalize. If we do that, we'd have a we'd have a 23 foot buffer instead of a 20 foot buffer if we own the seed it. I'm confused. So am I. Can you, uh, I'm just, can you explain that again? I'm just, I'm We're up sorry. to 23 feet now. Whoa. Where, where, where is the, where are you grading? You're, you're grading to the bottom of the silt saw, correct? Right. That's well, where it is right now. Yeah. Right. It's a grade, right? 
<coughs> to where it where it daylights, and uh, you know there, there is a, a, a modest intrusion into into the twenty foot buffer here, but we're we're talking about you know a slope that goes like this and it's this high. If we just let it naturalize, it'll still be a a buffer. Yeah, we're not trying to change the buffer zone. We're just trying and to actually, grow some grass in it. I mean, that's... Yeah. So what's going to happen is the, the, the brush and everything that's that's out there, it'll, it'll just go right up to where the stone is um, on the top of the dike. So what you'll have is more of a 23-foot buffer rather than a 20-foot buffer. And that, that naturalized vegetation would be at a higher elevation. So so, so an abutter from on their lot looking into the site, they're gonna have a better live buffer than than if it was terminated at the at a lower elevation at the at the twenty foot mark. Uh, can we have um, Peter Palmieri oh, review this? Yeah, he should be back from vacation next week. Okay. okay. So that um, we can dispense with any confusion. And I think I need to go for a walk. Mm. So if Peter Palmieri finds this acceptable, is do, that, do they have to come back to the board? That's, I think, what we... No. Okay, that's... No. Nope. All right. The, the Anything that changes the slope, I'm expecting that will get modified, particularly if we're putting riprap or whatever that is. I'm expecting that gets reflected in the operation and maintenance plan, that somebody's responsible for maintaining that. Because right? I don't, I don't, I don't want to see the undermining of your riprap, and then suddenly nobody's kind of got that on their radar screen. Well, there's, there's a couple of them ways we can take care of it. Um, there's usually less maintenance with riprap because it doesn't have to be re-blacked or mowed. Um, and it's, it's a more stabilizing product. But as a safeguard, we could modify the O&M and put something in there that the riprap is there, it has to be inspected. If it gets dislodged, it'll have to be restored. That's exactly what I'm asking. Sure. Where there isn't, there are, are uh, uh, sections of the homeowners association that require the association to maintain everything about the basins. So. I want yeah. I mean, what I'm saying is, you're modifying the design that they were anticipating maintaining. So I, I would like to make sure that the maintenance plan reflects that. Sure. Okay. All right. The next. Assuming ne Peter says he's okay with it. The other thing we have here is. Um, the frontage buffer to rebuild a stone wall? We, we, we are proposing to start a stone wall prior to the opening of school. Well, not the wall itself, but the preparation for it. Um, there is only one or two trees that we would even consider holding on to. This is one of them, the big old tree that's, that is right directly behind the existing wall. So that's the tree I'm talking about. And what we'd like to do is to just stop the wall sufficiently on either side of it and, and allow the tree to stay there. Um, the rest of what you'll see along the street is this kind of thing. I know, I went by there yeah, tonight. There's, there's just junk. It's all cherry trees and there's nothing. That's it's all second and third growth. Yeah. yeah. Yes. So the, the plan calls for us to um, to be at least a foot off of the load, the road layout for an in vinyl road, plus the, the so we're going to do the a five foot sidewalk, a two foot strip, and a two and a half foot wall, and that's about so this is what needs to come down yep. this stuff here. Yeah. But you're going to try. You will save this tree. That's the plan. Good. Yeah, this is the stuff that's. Yeah, it's just. I mean, that was all farmland at one time. Out in the front there? Well, mm -hmm. yeah. So we plan to clean it up. I mean, the objective is to end up with, with 
um, a front or a subdivision that looks, you know, kind of like the people at the wall. I mean, kind of like. Uh, yeah. So this tree is actually in front of the wall? No, where it's, the wall's it's behind it. Oh. I thought you said it was like seven it's feet. It's not that tree? I don't think so. No. This is the tree that they want. Oh, I'm sorry. I thought that was the tree, tree you were talking about. That's the tree they want to save. This looks like junk, doesn't it? It's all, hmm? all scrub. It's all scrubby stuff. So is where the stone wall is now, that's where it's going to oh, go where back? Be, where it will be is about two feet in, on the other side of that. So it, it will run right into that tree. But you'll give it enough room to grow? Yes. Okay. Yeah, it wouldn't be my favorite. I think it kind of takes away from the wall, but it's a beautiful tree, so. I've seen stone walls actually go, that are empty now, that have gone around trees. There's one on Country Way. Hmm. So, our discussion about this, pan, um, yeah. um, I was just unclear where the limit of work was, but, and I thought it would be best if they came yes. back to the board to just um, verify that that's what you guys all um, agreed to. Yeah. Discussion? Bill? No. Ben? Um, I mean, I, I, I mean, I, I understand clearing it out, um, and I, it is going to look cleaner and neater. I guess my only concern would be people's perceptions of what is there, because when they go by now they see a wooded space when that's gone it's going to be wide open space and that is going to be people are going to talk about that and notice that well, there's, um, there are still a lot of trees left in there yeah there are right because there's have a basin and then there are trees on the other side of the basin oh yeah no i believe me, I, I understand uh if you're trying to construct uh, the masonry in there that this this stuff's kind of not not ideal so um i guess just a comment and not necessarily my an opinion it. We're going to get it anyway. <laughs> no How far what behind the stone wall do you have to clear? Could you put a limit of the clearing behind the stone wall, behind the existing stone wall? The other day you said maybe three feet is what you need behind the existing it, it, stone wall. It should wall. go, Karen, it should go five feet of sidewalk right. from the other side of the curb. Right. Two feet of grass strip. Right. And it's either two or two and a half feet of wall. Right. So nine and a half feet. That's about where we will end up. But they have from to the dig curve. a footing for the yeah. wall. Right, they have well, to they have to dig right. in stone yes. yeah. oh, yeah. to yeah. place the wall, so yeah. there might be a so little... How far so, it may be, so maybe it's another 10 feet. Ten, yeah, maybe it's another 6 inches, 12 inches. So can you lay that out prior to actually cutting... There really isn't anything else in our way. The, everything else that would be considered to be saved would be... Um, Further back, we're not going to. We, we'll, the only trees that we're concerned with are the ones that really are almost abut the wall. Mm. And they're young trees; they're not old. No, and they're well. Some of them are kind of weird looking. Stuff. It's all right with me. Okay. I think if we we set a ten foot limit, whatever the limit is. We ought to just stick to it. It's like having a 20 feet, feet from 20 foot buffer that's 23 feet. 20 feet from the road. From uh, the curb, right? Yeah, the curb. It's, it's going to be um, the road layout for in vinyl is seven feet off the curb. Okay, and you're going another three feet beyond another that? Two feet for, for, um, um, for grass strip, and then another nine. probably two and a half, three, three feet, thereabouts, four. So what's um, that? For digging like out 12. the wall and putting yeah. a base in it. So it's about 10 feet. Yeah, there you go. Uh, 10 feet wait. from the curb. Yes. From the road curb. Is that right? Yeah. Check that. I, I would, yeah, that, that sounds about right. All right. So it is said, so shall it be written. So do you want to make that as a motion, as an insignificant, as a minor change, so yes. that um, okay. it's, it's recorded? I think that uh, protects all sides. So I'll entertain a motion 
how, what do we want to say, Karen? Um, that minor field change. A minor field change of not more than 10 feet to reconstruct the stone wall on Ann Vinyl. While preserving this one. One beautiful this, tree. Uh, Time off. Let me do those numbers. Yeah, that, that's. <laughs> got, they have to build foot this wall. Sidewalk. We've got two, two foot feet, strip and so seven. Seven. three feet for a wall. And Let's say three. three. We need ten. more than ten. Yeah. Well, we we'll give you twelve. But, thank yeah. you. That'll work. All right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I guess it wasn't written. Well, no. <laughs> you know what it is? Is it's, 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 we did, we ended up well originally we thought around nine and a half, ten feet, but in order to get that offset from the road layout, we've got to go back even a little further. All right, a minor okay, field so change. Okay, 12 feet then. To 12, not more than 12 feet sure. from the curb. Do you need a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 All right, gentlemen. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yep. Blanchard Farm Estates, continued Stonewall discussion. Who's here for that? Um, Mr. Barry and Mr. Tedeschi both could not um, make it this evening. I received, um, I received an email late this afternoon that um, I've been talking to, um, talking to what's legally allowed to do um, and how to, what they can do. Um, the bond, the amount that we're retaining in surety right now for the stone wall is $3,500. And um, Amory has de determined, as um, Mr. Barry and Mr. Tedeschi both told you last time too, that the wall, um, it's no functional purpose. I mean, it was aesthetic, etc. And so, um, so the line item is 3500 for the stone wall. There's a contingency factor and an inflation factor in the estimate. So that amounts to approximately $4,000. So um, Blanchard Farm LLC is willing to voluntarily forfeit the surety for the stone wall for $4,000 to be used to um, for a town for a town interest now if you recall a few years ago you um in the subdivision approval for um white ash farm there was ten thousand dollars that the applicant put in that has to be spent by 12 um by july um, 19th or july 10th to, um, 2019 for storm scepter and um this money could go towards that. Sounds like a plan. A storm set owned by the town? Yes. This is replacing something we already have that, that no, needs to be was, replaced? Um, it was. I, I don't remember it. That's what I'm asking. It was White Ash Farm Condition 19. Yeah. Prior to the start of construction, the applicant shall provide the planning law with a check of 10000 towards the size of sizing purchasing and installation of a storm scepter to be installed by the town south of the existing catch basins between 310 and 318 country way and at 320 country way in order to treat storm water so is that that's is down, that coming out of the rain garden there or no it's 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 in the it's in the uh roadway right away right but the water that's coming in there is it coming out of the rain garden or, or um, um, no, this is this is um, no. This is to do something for the road, this not for the. This is to do something. Not handling the totally runoff from it. Totally different project. Totally different. I mean. No, I know. I know where White Ash Farm is. I'm right. saying is, was it intended to take runoff from White Ash Farm and deal with no, it? No, no. It was intended as a. Um, to improve the stormwater condition to on the, the road. Water quality of okay. the road because it's you know um, it runs across the road. There, right. right. Okay. It's now I'm remembering it. <laughs> and I know they are working on that right now in um, DPW, and they're well aware of the deadline because that money has to be returned. And um, Mr. Barry and Mr. Jeski are 
willing to donate, um, well, not donate, voluntary forfeit the surety of $4,000 to that cause. Okay, do and does that cause need more money? Um, yes, <laughs> it does. Oh, goes without saying. You, you got another wall? Pardon? I said, does he have another wall? <laughs> <laughs> I actually live at 318 and the water cools up ever since they put the, um, the sidewalk in, it seemed to me. So like the last two or three years, it uh, cools up a lot right at that one storm basin right across from... Which side one, of the entrance? One street over, I mean one, if you're facing the project through the house to the right and then I'm on the opposite side of the street, um, <coughs> and there's a storm basin um, just in front of my property that that seems to be plugged like all the time. And there's a gentle slope and all the water, everything runs on one side and on the other side and it all kind of collects in the middle. And mm -hmm. that's right where, right where that is. Is that the one they're replacing? No, you said they were installing no, a new one. It's a, a storm scepter between, between the catch basins. There, there are, I haven't seen the engineering drawings, but I know they are working on sizing it and pricing it right now. Mm -hmm. Do you have a motion? Yes, I do. And since the town is going to be dealing with the MS floor <coughs> permitting um, in the next year, I mean, things are due October. Some stuff is due October 1st. I think this will um, will help toward that. Okay. Thank you. Okay. I move to find that the stone wall at the entrance to Blanchard Farm Lane has not been constructed. Blanchard Farm LLC has indicated the wall serves no functional purpose. The surety estimate dated 12 13 17 has a line item of $3,500 for the stone wall construction plus a 10% contingency factor and inflation factor. Blanchard Farm LLC has voluntarily agreed to forfeit the surety for the stone wall plus a contingency and inflation <coughs> factor for a total of $4,000 to be used to supplement the purchase and or installation of a storm scepter to be installed by the town south of <coughs> existing catch basins between 310 and 318 Country Way and at 320 Country Way that DPW will be purchasing and installing by July 10, 2019. Second. Yep. Discussion? All those in favor, please say aye. 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 I mean, they should, um, the as builds right now are currently being, being done. Um, so this is just, they wanted to be able to have this resolved and hopefully in the next month be in here with uh, the as builds completed and for the final surety release. They did provide me the information in the past week that the um, maintenance has been turned over to the homeowners association. All right. Thank you. Mm -hmm. All right. Endorsement of plans, seaside and situate. Yes, we um, we have the uh, set of plans, paper plans that um, came in, and as one of the conditions of approval, you asked for um, endorsed plans. Um, even though it's been recorded, I think it's a good idea to endorse what you what you determine you want to endorse, whether it's the cover and the five sheets that were recorded. I think that that would make uh, probably the most sense because then they will go back and make us a paper copy. Horsley Witten um, will get a copy, and there'll be a copy out at the site as well. Okay. Mm -hmm. Steve? Okay. All right. I'll do whatever Karen says we it should do. It was required as part of your okay. conditions, mm -hmm. and um, we, um, we, I think it just helps everybody. So where do we sign? Um, well, we'll, we'll lay them out and we'll. Okay, at the end, we yeah. will sign everything. Right. Okay, thank you. If, if you'd like me to give a brief update of where we are with the project, I could do that now. Yes. Um, we have received um, 
We've, see, we've received letters today from the um, <coughs> DPW regarding the sewer capacity and that um, they will have to, the licensed contract is going to be installing the sewer and water actually has to pull the street opening permit. So those letters were received today, which fulfills condition 57 and 58. We have the recorded special permit. We have uh, the NIPTIS permit. We received the check to uh, cover cost of the town's consulting engineer. Um, we have a construction schedule, which was given to you last time. And we are in agreement as to the amount of the bond for the planning board bond. Um, we don't physically have the bond in hand yet because the bond estimate just um, was finalized for the planning board in the last 24 hours and they're still working on the bond wording. But I would highly recommend that we still, I have a tentative pre-construction conference set up on Tuesday. It involves an awful lot of people I mean, we're anticipating probably at least 20 people. Um, I would recommend that the board allow the pre-construction to go as, and just not allow construction to um, till we get the bond. start until the actual bond is received for both planning and conservation. I believe. Did, are you, did you send out the estimate? I haven't seen anything. I we just got it. We I I did not send it out to the board. Okay. The, the consulting engineer. Um, we just got the revised estimate in yesterday, and the planning board bond amount. Um, I can send it to you if you would like. Is eight. I'd like, yeah, I'd like to see the estimate. Is eight million. And thirty-seven cents. Eight million six hundred thousand five hundred ninety-eight dollars. Okay. Can you send us the estimate? I can send you yeah. the estimate. And this is um, they went they went back and they revised it after um, input from the consulting engineer of the and the list of items. Mm -hmm. this, there's going to be a planning board bond. Was that Horsley and Witten? Yes, Horsley yeah. Witten has been the chosen for the. Uh, Construction inspections for phase one. The, con the selectmen signed the contract the other night, and we have the um, we have we put a little extra money in there for a contingency factor, just in case something happens. Um, but it takes it's taking a little bit longer to get a bond. Um, you can't just get a bond in 24 hours now because of the amount of construction happening in the world. But we have that um, bond amount. So, um, just a request that I'd kind of like to see what Horsley and Witten said about that made the changes. So, is there a yep. is there a history of that correspondence or something you could just send us a package? Yes, I can yeah. send you the history of the correspondence. Th that's great. Appreciate it. All right. Um, do you all feel, are you all in agreement that the uh, pre-construction conference should be next Tuesday, regardless of not having the bond in place with the understanding that construction will not commence until bond is in hand? Yeah, with the explicit <laughs> That will be explicitly. Condition. <laughs> there's the Conservation Commission is going to have their own bond, and the Board of Selectmen, for their agreement, are going to have their own bond as well. So um, there'll be three, there'll be three different bonds. But your your bond and conservation bond are the ones that are you know are needed right away. Yeah. Uh, just I don't know um, if there's been any follow up on the mass DEP notification. That was something that came up at our last. You know if there's they've been notified about the follow up remedial uh, acti actions or anything. I, I do not know that, but that's they that's going to be gone over in the pre construction conference. Okay. They have to notify us when they are going to be doing that. And we're going to right. be going over all those steps yeah. in the, that are required as part of the permit during the pre-construction conference. Okay. They have 120 days and they have to notify us first, but the, 
realistically, the contract wasn't signed until Tuesday night. Right. So, um, you know. Okay. The contract. For for the for the construction observation. Oh. Because that that's that's the part that's under phase two. Review okay. of the performance bond was. I under thought you meant the P and S. The P and S is done, right? I mean, you guys own the property. Toll Brothers yeah. owns the yeah. property. We yeah. we have a, a copy of the deed, mm -hmm. etc. Okay. So yes, that we are going to be reviewing that extensively in the pre-construction conference, and that's why um, the Horsley Witten's LSP is going to be coming to the pre-construction conference as well. Cool. Okay. All right, so that's our understanding. Thank you. You don't need a vote on any of this, right? Just uh, direction. <laughs> Just direction. Yeah. I mean, because we're going to be having police, fire. Um, no, I meant just on right. on this issue yeah. about going ahead with the pre-construction, right? I highly recommend it. Right. I think, I think we're, we're all, all we're all in agreement with right. that. With That's the express it. provision yes, that will be yes, <laughs> yes. That no construction starts right. until the bonds are in place. Okay. All right. Discussion of alternate member recommendation. And we'll let you know um, tomorrow morning about yeah, this. We'll okay, tomorrow. Are we doing that? On ex on, are we doing that in executive session or what? Yeah, it's not yeah. an executive. Oh, it's, it's not? not an executive session. Okay. Um, I thought you yeah. said that last time, so. Yeah. All right. Um, alternate member. We have two to choose from. Ben, what, is, what do you think? Um, I thought that they were both good candidates, considering it took a long time to get some resumes sent in. Um, and it seems like they're both interested in kind of putting in the effort for the town. Um, I guess if I had to kind of think about what our current strengths are and weaknesses on our board, um, I do like the fact that um, Lewis, Mrs. Lewis, mm -hmm. I do like the fact that she has a legal background um, and has worked as an attorney in various aspects of real estate. So um, I think that is a definite um, strength for her. Uh, other than that, I don't I think they'd both be good. Steve. Um, well, I agree with Ben. I think it was great to have two viable candidates in here to, to talk with. I would have to say I am also leaning towards uh, Rebecca Lewis. Um, I do like her, her legal background. I also thought that um, some of the things that she was focused on are, are sort of consistent with what, you know, is kind of on, on the front of our... Um, list of things to do like the master plan like the water and the sewer issues um, and really sort of how do we deal with large developments I thought that was a pretty good answer to uh, some of the questions about what what did she see as the sort of the big issues coming up um, so I mean I, I could work with either one of them and if, you, if you're asking me to pick one I would probably give a slight nod to uh, Ms. Lewis. Okay. Bill. I agree with Stephen. I think either one of them would be an asset to the board. Uh, I, I also stack up the blocks the same way. I think that Rebecca probably gives us the, the legal piece which we're missing. And I think it would be worthwhile to have that. Patty? And I absolutely agree with all of that. Mm -hmm. okay. And as do I, there's no point in it. So we will go before the Board of Selectmen on the... I'm going to try to get you on the um, September 18th agenda because it has to be a roll call vote. All right. And so I will um, try to find out the legal wording, what I have to do for, for you know, what we have to do, but... Um, we have to submit a nomination. We have to submit a nomination, and I... Um, we'll ask Ms. Uh, Lewis to be present. Yes. Um, and for the meeting. And once it's over, we can send a, a letter of thanks to Mr. Fiore for having applied. Okay. Yeah, and maybe encourage him to. There's plenty of boards that need good yes, people. Yes, absolutely. Without a doubt. All right. Um, Is that likely to be first thing? 
on their agenda. Ask them if they can do it at seven. I'll try to ask if we Please. can get it on early because um, really, that's all. In and out. In and out. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, approve minutes please I move to approve the minute meetings for July 26 2018 and August 9th 2018 is there a second yep all those in favor the, the ones that were sent out email yes okay. aye all those in favor say aye aye, aye. aye. Okay. accounting I move to approve the requisition of $128.60 to Gatehouse Media for legal ad for 92 Neil Gates Street Public Hearing, Scenic Road and Shade Trees for $527.74 for the release of Stormwater Bond for 28 Otis Place, 27 Allen Place to Blanchett Farm LLC for $117.44 for the release of the Planning Board Guarantee Funds to Blanchett Farm LLC. Is there a second? Yep. Second. All in favor, please say aye. 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 All right, liaison reports. Um, GBA, nothing new. Um, water resources are meeting next week, so I'll have some more info after that. Um, it's not a liaison report, but I was kind of surprised. I saw the Mariner today mm -hmm. that apparently situate received this rating for senior friendly communities we're one of 30 in massachusetts really? and this yeah. i guess was something the council on aging did but really when i read the article it's very it has a very much a planning slant to it yes. and i was surprised that i've never heard about this before until reading about it in the mariner today so i don't know maybe we could talk with a coa person could come in and tell us a little more about the program because it it had to do with kind of like long term how the town's going to adapt to aging populations what what we're you know and then there was things that we were committing to um to get this uh kind of label for ourselves so that was that's it interesting mm -hmm. um, that, that was the outfall of the housing plan right when mm -hmm. laura brought it in like a year ago or whatever it was i don't I haven't looked I at the housing that. plan. That she, I mean, she gave us a copy to look at or something. But right. Remember that? Remember that What's that? <coughs> it was like the affordable housing. It wasn't affordable housing, but it was some kind of housing master plan or something that I think Laura was involved in sort of spearheading. No, we did a housing plan. Yeah, you did yeah. a housing plan, right. Yeah. And, so and it's one of the sort of things that, that should be on our list for the master plan, right? Right. is integrating integrating that back into the master plan all right um cpc met two weeks ago um what i believe will be coming forward the fourth of september before the selectmen there's uh four plus acres of land at the end of sunset road that overlooks the harbor the mcdonald property for five hundred ninety-nine thousand dollars, and CPC, I believe, is going to look into purchasing that property. And I think it makes a, a tremendous amount of sense. CPC is going to look into buying it. Yes. There will be um, offsets through NOAA and a, a number of other groups toward that amount of money. Um, you know, frankly, I for one don't want to sit at the Mill Wharf and, and look at a great big huge house. I really don't. And it would be lovely to be able to purchase a piece of property that belongs to everybody in this town east of 3A. That's really very visible. I, I think it's an important acquisition. So, um, other than that... Um, Any more reasonable. It started out at a little over $2 million. No, try three. <laughs> it was huge. And now it's everybody's, all of the, the players are in agreement, and this is the price, and hopefully we can go forward. Um, it was in the Mariner today that uh, CPC is now accepting applications for the annual town meeting. This particular item will go uh, for the McDonald property, will go before town meeting in November right away so CPC is trying to have things sort of on an ongoing basis so everything isn't smushed into one spot um, 
EDC. Uh, Sue DePisa is now chair. And um, going forward. With the Greenbush visioning plan? Yeah, that too. Yeah, <laughs> yeah there's a lot on there. They have a lot on their plate. I'll still be on, on the uh, commission, but I was, I'm not chair anymore. Any other liaison reports? Well, not a liaison report, but Steve and I were both at the water meeting with the Board of Selectmen. Mm -hmm. um, just an interesting aside that a lot of people don't know how child government works, <laughs> and that was pretty obvious by the questions. I thought it was a great wording experience for the entire town to watch how slow moving and torturous and frustrating legislation can be to try to move anything forward. Um, I don't know that anything came out of it except that we need to have a lot of plans in place sooner rather than later, but I thought it was an interesting. A lot of people I never ever saw before were at that meeting. And you may never see them again. And I may never see them again, yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, I, I thought it was, um, there was a lot of conversation that tended to confuse things more than clarify things, yeah. but one of the things that became clear was that we actually have two problems, not one, right? We have a problem with the old ductile iron pipe rusting away, which is supposed to be solved by the, the last two miles next spring. Um, and I have some questions about that, but, but that's only one of the problems. The bigger problem is really the, uh, the amount of manganese we have in our water system and the fact that at whatever concentrations we have it tends to precipitate out as kind of black or reddish brown hmm. material and um, that won't go away with the replacement of pipes it has to be addressed separately they appear to be trying being they're trying to address it with installing a a filter on one of the pumps to filter out manganese which is naturally occurring in all the groundwater wells and as I read it also occurs in surface water as well um, but that's one of six wells that they're treating um, it wasn't real there wasn't really a broader sort of plan on how they were going to manage the overall levels I think the idea is that the highest concentration is coming out of this one particular well so that by reducing it there and and uh, blending it with the other wells that that they'll reduce the concentrations i don't know if it's going to reach the level that you need to to manage it but it's not and you know i've done a little bit of reading on it and it's not an uncommon problem it's been around for decades and decades in all of Massachusetts and there's some pretty extensive uh, literature and technical recommendations on what to do to address uh, that particular issue and you know it's just not clear to me that um, it wasn't clear in the meeting anyway what that total game plan was but that's the longer term more ubiquitous problem and it doesn't get solved by replacing pipes no. but so, so I think we're you know when we first talked about replacing pipes I don't think it was quite clear that we had multiple problems like that it was sort of the manganese is causing the the uh, pipe corrosion and that's not really the case mm -hmm. but a lot of those pipes do still need to be replaced from what I understand the pipe that goes up um, Booth Hill Road was put in in 1934. Well, that's those are the pipes they're talking about. They're right. talking about all the pre-1935 unlined ductile iron pipe that needs to be replaced. And according to the presentation at the meeting, all of it has been done except the mile or two over at uh, Oceanside and Turner Road out there, which is supposed to be done next spring. Maybe. Maybe it wasn't clear. Maybe there's still more, but they didn't articulate that at the meeting. All right. Anything? It does need, I think, some clarity. 
and some leadership on this. So does that come under the master plan, Steve? Does that include it? Well, we'll the master plan Budget. talks about infrastructure, right? So mm -hmm. there should be a plan that it sort of addresses that. I'm, yeah, I'm they, thinking the plan is something that you know gets developed by the DPW and has a as an overall approach because they're going to have to manage and operate whatever gets installed. They're also going to have to maintain whatever. That's been one of the well, biggest that's, issues. That's what I meant by manage and operate. Yeah, but they have to maintain. And you know the installation of this filter on on one of the wells. It's uh, I think they said it was seven or nine million dollars. Oh, it was a big number. And that didn't really address the operating costs. That was just the installation costs. And anytime you put a filter on something, it also has has other impacts. Like it ha it increases pressure drop, which is de decreasing capacity of a of a pump. So there are a lot of sort of uh, elements that would have to be addressed. And I would assume if they're going to do this, they're going to also need to identify an operating budget that will pay for operating this new filter as well uh, but that wasn't addressed at the meeting lots to think about all right finally we have the planning and development report karen yeah we remain very busy with the applications we're receiving um we're working on the stormwater regs we're going to have an internal meeting um with a first pass of uh, some thoughts on it between Brad, Amy, and myself. And then we're going to be meeting sometime in September um, with the Stormwater Working Group. Um, we went to a presentation yesterday afternoon about the MS4 um, stormwater for that uh, the town has to do a submittal by October 1st because uh, the uh, it's here. I mean, they're the stormwater management for the uh, town is going to, it's going to be getting stricter. So what's the ram, what's the, what's the control, what's the ramification? Is it road runoff or how, how is it manifested itself in what the town has to do? Um, the town has in, in some impaired waters and um, this is just um, where, and uh, we're a reporting community. So D they have to, uh, DPW has hired consultants to come up with this plan. And then we have under that, that's um, basically EPA mandated. And under that you have construction general permits and you have um, post-construction follow-up where that's the disturbance over an acre. And some of those requirements are going to be getting a little bit stricter than Massachusetts DEP. So, so you're writing, first of all, a report that says where these impaired bodies are, and then the second of all, a plan water, to mitigate? The South, the South Coastal watershed is impaired. I mean, the whole, I mean, there's places that are impaired. And um, I'm just confused. Is this a report on this, how big the problem is, or is this a no, it's plan a, it's, on how to address the problem? It's a plan on how to address okay. the problem. So I think that we're going to be need to be coordinating with uh, DPW as we evolve the stormwater regulations um, for the future. And was there a discussion about what the major you know, sort of mitigation issues are that are going to impact us? Um, for, for the town as a whole? Yeah. Um, it's reporting and it's, it's cleaning up your, your waters. But you have well, to I guess it. what I'm thinking is, you does that mean provide. we have to put in additional stormwater management controls? They may need to, yeah. I mean, they have to do public education. Yeah. There's, um, I, I'm supposed to be getting a copy of the slide presentation, but the public education is one of them. These construction general permits, it's op it's, um, I guess stuff with the treatment plant, eliminating mm -hmm. in, um, inflow and infiltration, you know, so a lot of that kind of um, stuff. So illicit discharges, um, it's all the towns have to have yeah. to do it. Well, if there's a if there's a PowerPoint, I'd like to see it. If you get it, would you send us a copy? Okay. Yeah. But I, th I think we're going to need to do some coordination 
um, so that um, you know they have some specific requirements about how much um, you know storing the first inch of rain runoff and perhaps 90 percent TSS mm -hmm. um, and um, so I think we just have to be mindful of that it was a very good presentation um, so you heard the update on toll um, you heard um, a little bit where we are with 90 uh, with Curtis Estates um, I believe the fire station sign came into the um, ZBA in the past day or so for um, they're applying for a special permit so I think last uh, we met on that in June I think you probably technically need to provide a recommendation to the ZBA so would you like me to schedule that for the next meeting sure so they they have to get a permit not from us but from the ZBA right it's under a sign and it's I believe it's a permit from the ZBA a special well, permit it's a digital sign from, from the oh, ZBA so is it a waiver or something or um, it's under it's under a sign in our um, okay and I forget which section of the zoning bylaw um, but it says input from the uh, planning board Seven ten. Seven, ten. Yeah. Seven. Yeah. Seven. Sorry. <laughs> I see first numbers. What can I tell you? Ninety-seven. There you go. It's it's according to section seven ten, I believe. Yeah. And so, um, C, seven ten two C is possibly oh, the section. C. I haven't seen the application, but we talked about it briefly when the chief came in with his other projects um, in June. So um, you may, we want, might want to talk about it at the next uh, meeting. I need it for directional purposes. Oh. Huh. And this is for those that are, you know, told to evacuate, it's going to be on the sign. I haven't yeah, seen it sounds like we need to review and comment first. I so. haven't seen the application yet, but I mean that's one of the things that the chief covered when he, the electric sign board when he was here in June and um, last uh, the design review committee also the chief met with them on that as well. And uh, it seems to me, if I heard from somewhere, that uh, the money for this sign was donated by either Columbia. Gas or yeah. portion of it. Portion yeah. of it. Portion of it. Yeah. So if you'd like, I can just add it to the for a recommendation mm -hmm. um, for the next agenda, and then um, fifty Country Way. Um, they are progress. They're progressing on that. Um, I don't know <coughs> when. Um, I don't know when they're going to have the fire access road in the back complete. They have submitted samples for, um, and they're waiting for results back for the proctor, I believe, or, or that. Um, the handicap ramp out, out in front of building B, um, it's, it's in, but it needs to, um, it, it's, they have to do some, you know, some minor changes that Bob is now reviewing. Um, they this is for the one they're occupying? Mm -mm. No. Oh. Building and B. Building B is the one on the other side of the parking lot. Oh, I didn't realize you were talking about building B. Okay. And then um, on building A, um, the replacement Weatherby building, I believe that there's, um, there's stairs out the front, and technically I believe there's the plan show stairs off the, the porch in the front to the side to the sidewalk. Mm -hmm. So. So are they correcting that? Or are they asking for a change? No, they're not asking for a change. Uh -huh. I just, I probably missed them the first time on the drawing. Mm. <laughs> you need a magnifying glass to read some um, of this stuff. So um, the important thing is that all stairs and ramps work because that's that's what you want for um, accessibility 
Right. But we were also going for an aesthetic there too, right? Yes. We can pick that up at the end. There, I think there might be a few things that we want them to uh, follow up on. But we need the public safety aspect of it done first. And we I know. What I'm saying is yeah. if the stairs are in the wrong place, then maybe now is the time to tell them. The oh, stairs no, they're, they're, not, they're, 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 they're not, not in the wrong place. Oh, for, I thought that's what you just said. No. No, no. I, I'm sorry. No, I didn't. I, what, what did you just say then? I said I didn't really see them on the plan. But oh, you didn't there. see the stairs on the plan. Yes. They're so there. the stairs, the front, the front porch is going to have stairs off the front and, uh, you know, going out. To off the, the side. And off the side. And what are we going to do about the emergency access in the back? They're, they're, I mean, they're working on it. Issuing an occupancy permit for anything else that's done. There you go. Okay. Right? Um, I just I didn't it's to Karen about planning development I saw that Brad was on the Board of Selectmen for sewer discussion with about Drew Company do you know anything about does anyone know anything about that I heard it was very positive okay. and there were two avenues that they were exploring but to that end I'm not really sure okay, okay. so I know they're going for mass works grant yeah they filed for mass work grant uh, you know yeah. I think at the end of the day for something that big, we need the water and the sewer study done. And, you know, it's not going to be good enough just to say, oh, we think the capacity's there. Right. Right. They, they've been, I, I didn't, I didn't stay for that um, part of the selectmen's meeting, so I'll, I, I'll watch it or something. Um, yeah, I'll, I'll have to watch it yeah. myself. Okay. Do you have anything else? I think that's where we are. All right. Anybody else on the board have anything that they would like to uh, say or talk about? Then I will entertain Bill's motion. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. Okay. Do you want to keep these things that he yeah, handed out? Record. Yeah, I think that was the stuff. All that's the stuff he needs in these two. This is Cumberland's. There's, yeah, oh, we got three different guys on here. Yeah, because we got the Gunther Tootie stuff too. Yeah. I don't know if you got that. Yeah, we didn't get any.